Check, check, check. 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2. Je continue à parler. Est-ce que ce fort est clair pour vous 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1, 2. Check, check, check. Est-ce que ce fort est clair 1, 2, 1, 2. Merci.
Good afternoon. We have just finished a meeting of the North Atlantic Council. We addressed uh, yesterday's explosion in the east of Poland on the border uh, with Ukraine. Our top military commander, General Kavoli, briefed allies, and the Polish ambassador updated us on the incident and the ongoing investigation. Yesterday's explosion took place as Russia launched a massive wave of rocket attacks across Ukraine. Since the start of Russia's illegal war in Ukraine, NATO has increased uh, vigilance across our eastern flank, and we are monitoring the situation on a continuous basis. And investigation into this incident is ongoing, and we need to await its outcome. But we have no indication that this was the result of a deliberate attack. And we have no indication that Russia is preparing offensive military actions against NATO. Our preliminary analysis suggests that the incident was likely caused by a Ukrainian air defense missile fired to defend Ukrainian territory against Russian cruise missile attacks. But let me be clear, this is not Ukraine's fault. Russia bears ultimate responsibility as it continues its illegal war against Ukraine. In the meeting today, NATO allies offered their deepest condolences on the tragic loss of life. They expressed their strong solidarity with our valued allied Poland and made clear that we will continue to support Ukraine in its right to self-defense. Russia must stop this senseless war. Last night, I spoke with the Polish President Andrzej Duda and with President, US President Joe Biden. We agreed uh, that we need to stay vigilant, calm, and closely coordinated. We will continue to consult and monitor the situation very closely. NATO stands united, and we will always do what is necessary to protect and defend all allies. And with that, I'm ready to take your questions. We start with Polish radio, lady in grey at the back. Thank you, Anna. Beata Pomecka, Polish Radio, Public Broadcaster, Polskie Radio. Secretary General, what could be the outcome in concrete terms of today's meeting? Can we expect enhancing the Europe's air defense, especially in the countries bordering Ukraine, because as long as, as the war continues, there will be Russian rockets striking Ukrainian cities, and there is a risk that such situation can <laughs> Uh, happen again. Thank you very much. So in the meeting today, NATO allies expressed their strong uh, support, solidarity with our uh, ally uh, Poland. They also expressed uh, their deepest condolences for the uh, tragic loss of life. And NATO has significantly increased its presence in the eastern part of the alliance, in particular uh, since the uh, invasion of Ukraine in February. With more uh, uh, troops uh, uh, on land, uh, uh, ground troops, but also with uh, a significant substantial uh, air and naval power. And this has, of course, both increased our air defense capabilities, but also our capabilities to monitor, to, uh, to, 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 um, uh, sir, uh, to have full picture of what's going on on the border uh, between uh, uh, NATO allies like Poland and Ukraine. Uh, and we are constantly assessing what more we need to do. We also have made important decisions uh, at our summit in Madrid to further strengthen our uh, presence uh, in uh, the eastern part of the alliance. BBC. Uh, thank you. Jessica Parker from BBC News. I just wanted to ask, given the incident that happened last night, do you think this was perhaps the most tense moment for NATO 
in this conflict so far. Thank you. I'm always careful to uh, rank different incidents and, uh, and, and uh, situations. Uh, it demonstrates that the, the war uh, in Ukraine, uh, which is uh, President Putin's responsibility, uh, continues to create dangerous situations. Uh, at the same time, we have to remember that this happened um, at the same time as uh, Russia launched a wave of new indiscriminate uh, missile and air attacks on uh, Ukrainian cities, attacking critical uh, civilian infrastructure, uh, hitting civilian uh, targets. Uh, then it's uh, nothing strange. Uh, then, then, of course, that is a, in itself a very dangerous uh, situation. And then uh, that uh, we then also see that uh, uh, there may be also consequences on uh, NATO territory. It's a consequence of the war that uh, Russia uh, wages against uh, Ukraine. Okay, we'll go to the Ukrainian news agency in the middle. Thank you for the floor. Uh, Dmitry Skurko, National News Agency of Ukraine. I just want to mention that Ukrainians do understand the pain of the Polish people and have a greater sympathy with them. My question is uh, how that incident will be reflected on the assistance that uh, uh, allies uh, uh, provided for Ukraine in air defense. Where will be some kind of new systems uh, to cover the Ukrainian sky? Thanks. There will be a meeting today uh, in the uh, contact group for uh, Ukraine uh, to uh, coordinate the support uh, NATO allies and uh, partners and others are uh, providing to Ukraine. And the uh, uh, main focus of our efforts over the last months uh, has been on air defense, especially since uh, uh, Russia started to launch these indiscriminate attacks on uh, Ukrainian uh, cities a few weeks ago. Uh, and I welcome that uh, more and more allies and partners are providing advanced air defense systems to Ukraine. Uh, NASAM's uh, uh, Hawk batteries from, uh, from Spain and, and, and others. And I also know that uh, Sweden has made new announcements of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, additional support also with air defenses to, uh, to Ukraine. So we are mobilizing uh, additional support, uh, especially when it comes to uh, different types of air defenses. NATO is also providing counter drone systems. Uh, we need many different systems uh, to protect against uh, cruise missiles, uh, ballistic missiles, but also drones. Uh, and we need uh, a layered uh, defense um, of, um, of Ukraine. That's exactly what the Allies are uh, providing in different uh, uh, ways. Bloomberg. Natalia Drozdjak from Bloomberg. Does this incident, um, will this spur more air defense for uh, allies on the eastern border? I know you said they've, there has been a step up since the beginning of the war, but does more need to be done? Thank you. So we are constantly assessing uh, 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 our presence uh, in the eastern part of the alliance. We have significantly increased our presence on land, at sea, and in the air, and that has significantly increased our uh, air defense capabilities, especially in the eastern part of the alliance. At the same time, uh, we have no indication that this incident was a result of a deliberate attack uh, on NATO territory. And we have no uh, uh, indications that Russia is uh, uh, planning uh, offensive military actions against uh, uh, NATO allies. Um, so uh, I think this demonstrates the dangers uh, connected to the ongoing war in Ukraine, but it hasn't changed our fundamental assessment of uh, the threat against the NATO allies. Uh, it shows uh, uh, the importance of uh, monitoring, of being uh, vigilant of the presence, and we made decisions for long-term adaptation of NATO's deterrence and defense at the uh, summit in uh, Madrid in June, and that includes uh, partly more presence in the East, partly more pre-positioned equipment uh, uh, in particular in the eastern part of the alliance, and partly earmarked forces uh, so we can uh, quickly scale up the battle groups we have in the eastern part of the alliance. And of course, all of this will also further strengthen our air defense capabilities. Then air defense is partly land-based, but air defense is also very often uh, uh, air-based, also aircraft, 
and, uh, and, uh, and naval based, uh, uh, based on our ships. And of course, uh, air forces uh, and naval forces is something we very quickly can move in. Sakur has our Supreme Allied Commander uh, in Europe has already authorities to move in uh, additional forces, including air and naval forces, to augment our air defences uh, quickly if needed. Okay. Uh, Thanks a lot, Thomas Kuczka, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung. Secretary General, a few factual questions, if I may. Um, first of all, the debris found uh, near the um, border of Poland and Ukraine, is this debris only from uh, an uh, Ukrainian um, uh, rocket launched uh, to intercept a Russian uh, missile, uh, or is there also debris uh, of a Russian missile? Uh, secondly, what, is, what was the likely trajectory uh, of the Rus Russian missile that was meant to intercept uh, by uh, Ukraine? And thirdly, did NATO forces present at the eastern flank activate their air defense system, systems yesterday uh, because they saw an incoming, um, uh, potentially incoming uh, uh, missile? Thank you. So we have air defense systems in place that are active 24-7 uh, 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 all the time. Uh, we have uh, AWACS planes, we have uh, 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 aircraft, uh, we have, uh, uh, have uh, land-based systems and we have uh, naval-based systems. Uh, so uh, we have air defenses uh, uh, which uh, uh, operates constantly uh, throughout the alliance. Then, of course, we have a significant focus and we have, a, uh, in particular, increased our presence uh, in the eastern part of the alliance, and this also includes uh, uh, Poland. Then, on the details of the findings and the ongoing in, in investigation, uh, it will not be right if I uh, go into to those details, but, uh, uh, as I said, uh, our um, preliminary uh, findings uh, are that uh, uh, are that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, likely uh, caused by uh, a Ukrainian um, uh, air defense missile uh, and, uh, and we have no indication that uh, it was any deliberate attack on uh, NATO territory. Politica. Thank you very much. Just a brief question. Um, has there been any communication between NATO and the Russian authorities, even on a technical level, over the past 24 hours regarding Russian activity close to NATO's borders? Thank you. We have military lines of uh, communications. Uh, we are able to communicate with Russia in different ways, uh, as NATO and as allies, but I cannot go into the details of exactly what kind of contact have been over the last 24 hours. Deutsche Welle and beyond. Hi, thank you. Uh, does the fact that the Polish government, um, even after hours of assessing what had happened, was still ready as of this morning, as I understand it, to possibly ask for Article 4 consultations, does that indicate to you that they do not feel reassured, um, despite all of these measures that have already been taken? And you said that you're constantly assessing and you've got things on tap. Um, are, are military uh, planners making any, any additional plans at this very moment to send more to Poland, to reassure them, because obviously this is a credible scenario since they had Article 4 teed up even after investigations were underway. Thanks. As I spoke with President Duda uh, last uh, night, uh, we agreed uh, on the importance of uh, 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 awaiting the outcome of the investigation. We don't have the final outcome of the ongoing in investigation, but uh, uh, all allies agree on the assessment uh, I just uh, shared. Uh, that we have no indication that this was a deliberate attack. And of course, that has consequences for what kind of responses uh, that we need to take, uh, since we have no indication that this was a deliberate attack or that Russia is planning any offensive military actions against uh, NATO allies. But we all also agree that uh, uh, Russia bears the ultimate responsibility. They are responsible for the war uh, in Ukraine that uh, has caused uh, this situation. 
And uh, uh, if there hadn't been for the war, of course, we wouldn't have been in this situation with the two casualties and, uh, and the incident uh, we, uh, uh, we saw in, uh, in, uh, in Poland yesterday. But allies agree on the approach. Uh, there's been no call for an Article 4 uh, meeting. And that's based on the findings, based on the analysis, and based on uh, 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 the results so far of the ongoing investigation. Okay, Spiegel. Secretary General, you just said that uh, everything would be done to protect the allies. Now, the village where uh, the missile hit uh, yesterday was very close to the Ukrainian border. So in order to effectively protect Poland from incidents like these in the future, would it not be conceivable or make sense from your point of view to extend the NATO air defense umbrella into Ukrainian territory in order to intercept missiles which might be headed uh, to uh, potential targets near the Ukrainian-Poland border? NATO allies are not party to the conflict in uh, Ukraine. Um, uh, NATO and NATO allies provide support to Ukraine. Uh, we help Ukraine to uphold the right for self-defense. Um, that's a right which is enshrined in the UN Charter. And of course, Ukraine has the right to defend itself against uh, Russia's illegal war of aggression against uh, Ukraine. Uh, and our main priority now, or one of the top priorities now, is to provide more air defense systems for uh, Ukraine. Um, our air defense systems uh, are set up to defend against attacks around the clock. Uh, but we have no indication this was a result of a deliberate attack, and uh, this incident uh, uh, does not um, have the characteristics of an attack. And that also explains uh, uh, why the reactions were as they were uh, last night, because uh, uh, this was uh, not a deliberate attack and you know, didn't have the characteristics of a deliberate attack against NATO territory. ARD. Markus Peltz with ARD German TV. Uh, two questions, if I may. The first mm -hmm. one is a more personal one. Uh, everybody was very scared, I think, yesterday evening. Everybody understood that it could be a potentially very dangerous situation. How was your personal reaction when you first heard about it? And the second one is about, um, you said uh, the debris that was found is probably from a Ukrainian uh, air defense missile. Uh, the Ukrainian foreign minister said this is a Russian conspiracy theory and it's not true. Uh, are you, how do you judge that, that he made this judgment uh, on the origin? Thank you. The last question. Uh, um, Kuleba said no. it's, it is a Russian conspiracy theory that it is a Ukrainian air defense missile. Uh, but your um, preliminary findings are apparently very different. Thank you. Well, the investigations are not finally concluded. Uh, 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 but, uh, but based on what we so far know, uh, uh, this is most likely uh, Ukrainian air defense uh, 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 systems or missiles. Uh, but again, this is not Ukraine's fault. Uh, Russia bears the responsibility for what happened in, uh, in, in Poland yesterday because this is a direct uh, result of the ongoing uh, war and a wave of uh, attacks uh, uh, from Russia uh, against uh, Ukraine uh, yesterday. Uh, and of course, Ukraine has the right to shoot down those missiles that are targeting Ukrainian cities and, uh, and, uh, and, and critical um, uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, 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 then, um, uh, then uh, NATO are, is prepared for situations like this. We are exercising, we are uh, preparing for instances, for accidents uh, uh, like this, uh, to uh, first and foremost to prevent them from happening. But if they happen, to ensure that they don't spiral out of control. So yes, of course, we were concerned uh, when we got the reports yesterday. And especially, uh, we were um, saddened by the fact that there were two casualties. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we are monitoring, we are following very closely, and, uh, and therefore we are prepared to handle uh, situations like this in a firm, calm, resolute uh, way, uh, but also in a way that uh, prevents uh, further uh, escalation. Thank you very much, Secretary General. You've said repeatedly that NATO has all the capabilities along the Eastern Front and, um, and that you're ready for these sorts of incidents. 
at any moment. So was this a failure of NATO's defenses that this missile was able to hit uh, Polish territory? Well, the air defense systems uh, in the East, uh, they are set up to defend us against attacks. And, and, and attacks, uh, missiles, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, they have special characteristics which we then uh, we follow and, and we monitor and then we make a judgment whether it's an attack or whether it's some, some, something else. Uh, as I said, this was most likely uh, uh, a, a Ukrainian um, air defense missile, this ray, uh, and of course that, that missile doesn't have the characteristics of an attack. And therefore that explains uh, also why uh, the reactions were as they were, uh, and uh, and uh, that doesn't say anything about our ability to defend against uh, deliberate attacks against uh, NATO territory. Wall Street Journal. Thank you very much, Dan Michaels, Wall Street Journal. Just a couple more factual questions, if possible, if the analysis yet shows this. Do you know if there was a Russian missile in the immediate area uh, that the Ukrainians were specifically trying to target? And do you know if the Ukrainian missile exploded on the ground, if it exploded you know, potentially in the air in contact with um, the Russian missile, and, and if what was on the ground was just shrapnel or debris from that. Thank you very much. All of that are relevant questions, um, but I will not go into details, uh, partly because uh, there is uh, uh, an ongoing investigation. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, we have to decide later on how many details we can uh, reveal. But anyway, there are ongoing investigations. So this is an ongoing investigation that will look into those issues. TV2. Uh, lady over there. Thanks. Ilan Sørstal from TV2 Norway. Mr. Secretary General, um, the French President uh, Emmanuel Macron, he urged China to play a greater mediation role uh, during this conflict. Uh, do you see a, a greater role for, uh, you, uh, for China? And second question, do you see any possibilities for peace negotiations in the near future? First and foremost, I believe that China should clearly condemn uh, the invasion uh, of, uh, of Ukraine, which is uh, a blatant violation of international law uh, and the sovereignty and territorial integrity uh, of uh, Ukraine. And, uh, uh, for instance, in the different uh, votes in the UN, uh, China has not voted in favor of those resolutions clearly uh, condemning uh, the, uh, the invasion. Uh, actually, China is also sharing much of the uh, Russian narrative about the war, uh, and, uh, and, and that's a narrative which is not correct. Uh, uh, it is Russia and President Putin that are uh, responsible for the war, and they can also end uh, the war. Um, um, <clears throat> we have to remember what this is. This is a war of aggression, where one country, Russia, invades another country and tries to control and take territory from that country. And of course, uh, uh, Ukraine has the right to defend itself against uh, the invasion, against the Russian aggression. Um, if, if, uh, if President Zelensky and, and Ukrainians uh, uh, stop to fight, of course, then, then, then uh, Russia will win and they will achieve their military goals. So the reality is that if President Putin and Russia stops fighting, then we will have peace. But if... Uh, President Zelensky and Ukrainians stop uh, fighting, then Ukraine will cease to exist as an independent sovereign nation. They have the right to defend themselves as an independent nation. Uh, most likely this war will at some stage end at the negotiating table. At the same time, we know that the outcome of those negotiations is closely and fundamentally linked to the strength on the battlefield. So the best way we can ensure, maximize the likelihood for a peaceful negotiated solution is to support the Ukrainians on the battlefield because that will maximize the uh, probability for them uh, achieving an acceptable negotiated solution on the negotiating table. So yes, we all want peace. Yes, we all want this uh, war to end, but the best way we can contribute to a peace which ensures that Ukraine remains an independent sovereign nation 
is to provide military support to Ukraine so there can be an acceptable uh, negotiated uh, solution at the end of this war. We'll take one final question, TVN24 Poland, gentleman here. Thank you, Secretary General. As you said, it's too early to assess if, whether it was accident or not, but for sure it was a test, stress test for the whole NATO. Could you assess that and to rate the first reaction of the Polish government, the channel of communications and the reaction of the NATO? Any room for improvement and any lesson learned for future? Thank you. NATO allies and Poland uh, reacted in a calm and measured and well-coordinated way. Uh, we uh, coordinated our responses. So we, uh, we spoke uh, uh, together, of course, uh, during the evening uh, yesterday. Uh, and uh, also our military commanders uh, informed us. I spoke uh, with um, the Supreme Allied Commander uh, uh, both yesterday and, and, and this morning. And he also came to NATO allies or to the North Atlantic Council here in the NATO headquarters this morning and briefed uh, allies. So the coordination, the exchange of information and the measured uh, uh, responses and also the message that we need to establish the facts before we draw any final conclusions on the incident uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Poland, uh, that, that shows that NATO allies uh, reacted uh, in a prudent and responsible uh, way. I think you have to understand that to, to, to manage this kind of incidents uh, is, is partly about being firm and reacting quickly, but it's also about uh, being calm and, and, and preventing unnecessary escalation. And we always need to find that balance, and therefore always, always it's also important to have the best possible picture of actually what happened. Therefore, we actually uh, uh, said yesterday that we need some time to look into uh, the incident. Uh, we did that over the course of the, uh, the night, and then uh, we have a clearer uh, picture today, uh, a picture that tells us that uh, we have no indication that this was a deliberate attack, no indication that this was um, uh, uh, something that was targeted on NATO uh, territory, and no indication that Russia is planning any uh, aggressive military actions against Ukraine. But what we do know is that the whole incident incident is caused by Russia's brutal war in Ukraine. So the best way of preventing anything like this from happening again is for Russia to stop this war. Thank you very much. This concludes this press conference. Thank you.